in America, 5,000 people about that will die today. And of the 5,000, 40 or so will die through murder. They'll be murdered. And that number will be a little bit higher today because 27 plus people have been killed in Texas. 5,000 people dying today. Some of them maybe folks lived to be a very long, happy life and, and died with uh, grace, died in peace. Many of them died too soon, died tragically, were murdered, died in a car accident, died of a heart attack. A lot of people died today. A lot of grieving people today, as there is every day. So it's 27 people out of 5,000. And I know this. I know the math in my head. But I'm still grieving for these 27 plus people that I've never met. They went to church. And somebody invaded that that. What, what for them was a sacred safe space. I, 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 I believe I share their beliefs, so it, I probably view it as a sacred space too. And, uh, and somebody decided, somebody made a personal decision to use a tool, a tool that we use for a lot of things, including this. And they decided to use a tool to kill as many people as they possibly could. 27 plus people dead, 20 plus people wounded. There's a congregation of, uh, I, I guess about 50 or so is, is what I've heard. Now I understand the facts are going to be fast and furious and they're going to change. And this is... Uh, it's 6.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, November 5th, 2017, and about six or so hours after this uh, shooting happened in a church in Texas, Southern Springs, Texas. And, you know, I just want to, I want to have the time to grieve. I, I don't know these people. They're only 27 of 5,000, but, you know, for personal reasons, this this affects me. 27 people all at once in a church being gunned down. As a person who somewhat regularly goes to church, I, I can totally connect and identify to these folks. So, of course, it's going to hit me. Subjectively, not objectively, but subjectively, it's going to hit me. And, and I want to grieve. Ah, that's it. I, I want to give, I want to give this, this, this horrible story time to figure out fact from fiction. I, I want to, I want to give space to the folks that are affected by this, the family and the friends of, of the dead the wounded themselves as, as well as the family and friends of the wounded a whole congregation what what they must be going through i, I want to give that space i, I want to just i i, I want to give them as much peace as 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 we could possibly give them quiet let them have that time to take this in but Reality doesn't let me do that. Reality comes at me. Well, comes at me with this. Senator Al Franken says, 
to all who lost loved ones at Sutherland Springs. The nation grieves you. We must find moral courage to address these senseless acts. What do you think, Al Franken, means? Moral courage? Moral courage? Is it really moral courage that uh, you have, Mr. Al Franken, Mr. Senate-privileged, government-privileged man, sitting in the safety of your guard-protected world, armed guard-protected world? A man who has no problem assuming a position of ruling over 300-plus million people few handful of people in this country ruling over 300 plus million people the power of life and death literally over our oh, oh, in in their hands over us and this man wants to talk about moral courage you have no moral courage there, there's there's nothing courageous uh, uh, about a senator standing behind his armed guards trying to whip people up to a frenzy of hate and fear to to support government goons going out into the land and seizing arms, disarming the populace so that the only ones who have the power to have any power of lethal force are government agents. That's who you are, Al Franken. There's, there's nothing moral about your position. There's nothing courageous about your position. And shame on you. Do you just let this float out here? We who say, dude, just give it time. Just, just, just let there be peace. Give these people a space. Let's figure out what happened. Let's mourn. Let's bury the dead. And the blood is still hot on the floor. The steam is still rising. And you want to talk about moral courage. And then there's Senator Chris Murphy right below. Uh, he, he just, he wasn't subtle like Al Frank, and he went all hog in. And old Greg Hogben, whoever the heck you are, you decided to, uh, you decided to, to say, it bears reading. Oh, yes, it, it does bear reading. It bears reading. It, th this, this letter that is written by Senator Chris Murphy is indicative of the sickness in Washington, D.C., and the sickness in this land. The paralysis you feel right now, Mr. Chris Murphy, another, another morally courageous senator with, with his uh, armed guards and his... his Pension for life, his health care for life, able to make sweet business deals for himself and his family, thanks in large part to his power, government, assured that if and when he decides to leave government, he will be able to land three plus figure salaries as a lobbyist or just giving speeches uh, from organizations that know that they'll be currying political favor in return. You, 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 you morally courageous senators. Bravo. The paralysis you feel right now, the impotence, the impotent helplessness that washes over you as news of another mass slaughter scrolls across the television screen isn't real. It's a fiction created and methodically cultivated by the gun lobby designed to assure that no laws are passed to make America safer. America safer? You're going to have you you believe that gun laws are going to fundamentally change the morality of human beings if and when they want to kill one another. Mr. Mr. Moral Courage behind your guards, your armed guards with your pension for life and your health care for life. You you want to try to moralize to us? You want to talk about being safer behind your armed guards? What you're telling us is, listen, 
I know that the United States of America has murdered millions of peoples overseas. Probably murdered more than a few right here in America as well. I know this. Why Saudi Arabia just bombed uh, a Yemen village and murdered 27 plus whatever civilians. More civilians died in that bombing than died in this shooting. And those were bombs that were made by America, sold by America. You're not for, you're not for gun control. You're for civilian gun control. You're for disarming the population. You are for making it easier for the state to make tough decisions, decisions that the population would fundamentally be against. Because I can guarantee you that if this population was not armed as it is, that even under Obama, even under Clinton, even under Bush, it would have done a lot more by now than they already have. They're doing as much as they believe that they can without having the backlash. So here we are. This this troll, this 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 Senate entitled evil despicable human being, Senator Chris Murphy, moralizing to the rest of us, acting like he cares about the dead. You don't care about the dead, Senator. If you immediately immediately use their dead bodies to convince people to to bring people to a fearful state so that they will support black booted thugs going door to door taking guns from people because that is inevitably where it ends with these folks i don't don't kid yourselves there is no such thing as common sense gun control the only common sense gun control is gun safety and aiming right that's it other than that there's no such thing as common sense gun control if you're going to have a powerful centralized state such as the united states of america in charge so i started off well talking about Honestly, something I, I really don't want to talk about. Well, actually, what I started off with, I did. The, the, the horror, the tragedy of 27 people, possibly more, at least 27, being murdered by, by somebody for whatever reason it was. And I don't care. It was an individual that acted. I don't care whose camp the monster belonged to. I'm not going to demonize that camp. I'm not going to make a broad judgment about that camp. I don't care if he was a white supremacist. I and, and we do know it was a he with that much, you know. I don't care if he's a Muslim. I don't care if he's a nutty progressive. I don't care if he's a far-right conservative. I, I don't care if he's a member of Antifa. I, I don't care what 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 group he belongs to, what camp he belongs to. I hold him responsible and him alone. I don't hold any of the camps responsible for the judgment, for the actions of that one individual, that monster, that despicable human being. And I would like, I would love if we lived in a land where when things like this happen, we, we, we can give, give everyone space, the families, the friends. I mean, uh, to, a, to, a, to a, 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 a monumentally, uh, significantly less of a degree, even people like me, give me some space. The people that are touched by this tragedy. I'm not touched anywhere near what the folks who, who, are, who, who know the people that are victims here. But, but so many across this country are touched by this. And no, we, we can't. We can't just sit back and just wait and, and let people have their space. Not when you have senators who immediately take to Twitter 
and decide to use this as an opportunity to try to trump up support to to deny us the fundamental human reality of self-defense and to say that they're doing it out of a position of moral courage these these cowards these these senate entitled patricians <laughs> hiding behind their armed guards with their with their lifelong pensions with their lifelong health care with their assured golden parachutes when they come out of public service you want to moralize to us i tell you what you do you give up all your money that you've made directly and indirectly through government you give up all your pensions you give up all your health care you give all of that up. You disarm the guards around you. You disarm the guards in Capitol Hill. You disarm the police. You disarm the military. You go ahead and do that. Because I tell you that those guns have killed far more people than non-government people ever could. You want gun control? You really want to save people? Then you should look to yourselves. Because you guys... You guys kill at a scale that, that, that dwarfs anything that we see in America today from individuals. So I, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of these videos that I've made in response to these shootings, knowing Man, you gotta get in there. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta engage. We we live at a time where the state is involved. It's it's it controls our health care. It controls our death decisions. It controls our birth decisions. It controls our marriage decisions. It controls our. It's 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 aiming to control our speech decisions. It's it's aiming. To control our sex decisions it's it's either in control or moving fast to control every aspect every major aspect of human interaction it is seeking to micromanage when you live in that land then no you cannot keep silent when something like this happens, you cannot give these 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 poor folks in Texas the time and the space to breathe, to pray, to meditate, to bury their dead. You, you can't you can't give them that time and space because we live in total politics, everything, and you want to interchange the word politics with war. Because politics is absolutely a form of warfare. It is human interaction warfare, plain and simple. Politics is simply using, just, just giving justification to, and using the, the e either physical force or the threat of force to influence the acts of individuals whose acts do not harm others. It's war. It's an absolute war. And the fact that there is no rest, there is there's no time to bury your dead, the fact that that's a reality in America today should tell you this 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 nation, this nation state is out of control. You began with an experiment ostensibly Started with the Articles of Confederation. I'm not going to get into all that now, but the Articles of Confederation didn't give the central powers enough power. So you came up with the Constitution. But, dude, you created a Bill of Rights. You pledged, oh, man, this is going to be limited. But it wasn't, was it? It's just been growing. Ever growing. Ever getting larger ever gaining more and more control over our lives and and god help us all god help us all 
if they ever succeed in actually disarming civilians in America today. Because every day you're going to hear, well, no, you won't hear. You won't hear about it at all. You won't know about it at all. But every day, far more than 27 people will be murdered by guns. And the guns will be in the hands of the government. And you and I will be the ones being murdered. So I'd like to... I know probably most of my listeners are, are not Christians. And I'd still... Yeah, I, I, I still offer a prayer, a prayer for the folks touched by this tragedy. And I, I don't pray for the nation state. I have nothing for the nation state. America murdered more than 27 people around the world today with its military and police. So I got, I got nothing for the nation state. If there is such a thing, I don't even know if there is such a thing as a nation of America, but if there is, I pray. I pray for the nation of America that, that we find a way <laughs> to open our eyes and see. The problem isn't the guns. The problem is in the hearts of people. It's in the hearts of, of 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 Senator Chris Murphy. This despicable man who believes that it's it's more important to take the opportunity to stand on top of a dead body and accuse basically accuse anyone who supports the fundamental right to self-defense, the human reality, as I like to call it, of self-defense. He's calling you and I murderers. I know, he says gun lobby. <laughs> and now it's us, because <laughs> we're, we're, we're part of the gun lobby. We're, we're being controlled by the gun lobby if, 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 if we support the fundamental right to self-defense. He's calling us murderers. He is blaming us for the murders of these folks while he votes for murder overseas, while he continues to live off of the fat of the land, ill-gotten gains, all of you in the Senate, all of you in the House. You live off of stolen property. Don't you ever moralize to us. Don't you ever moralize to us unless and until you give up all that sugar that you gathered, that you, that you bled from our bodies. So I pray that, that more and more people see that the problem is in our hearts. It's in the hearts of people who somehow imagine that, yes, I should kill others. And it's also in the hearts of a people that imagine that they can that they can turn to this coercive enterprise to use its guns or the threat of its guns to force people to act in ways to well to alter the actions of people actions that are not harming others purely because they feel threatened by it or or they're offended by it or you know they have some moral indignation that it shouldn't be done. And those people, they exist on all, all parts of the political spectrum. So I pray. Yeah. And I'm tired of doing these videos. I'm tired of feeling like, real or imagined, I feel like, you got to dive in. You got to, you got to, you got to counter this narrative, dude. You can't just let this float out there. You've got to push back because the cost is high because a disarmed people if if you think that they're robbing from us now if you think they're murdering us now if you think they're caging us now you wait till you get disarmed you see what these people do 
the only restraint that they have in taking from us is fear from what we might do in return. And that fear goes down a whole hell of a lot once they disarm us. I don't know what else to say. I'm just going to leave it at that.